In the workshop, how to make a water gauge protector. Water gauges can be very fragile, particularly if you smash them with your shovel. This beautiful Castle Steam V6 boiler is a coal fired boiler, so I am going to be shoveling coal into it very shortly. That is, as soon as I get the time to fit the hand pump and the injector. At the moment, I seem to have about a million and one jobs that need to be done, and I will get round to them all, so don't worry about that. I need to do some work on the steamboat named Edith. And weather permitting, I hope to do the glass fibre work on the hull outside. But for the moment, I need to do something about this water gauge. It's a very beautiful water gauge, and it's a very long water gauge, and it's going to be in very close proximity to my shovel. So rather than smash the water gauge, which is not the end of the world, you just generally speaking get a lot of steam and boiling water all over everywhere, it isn't like a thermonuclear explosion and the glass doesn't take your eye out. Well, it might do if you had your head really close to the glass when it burst. But all of this talk about breaking water gauges is going to be a thing of the past when I make my prototype water gauge protector. I've been thinking about this for a while and I'd love to say it's an original idea, but it isn't. I have a very old steam boiler that came out of a railway carriage. It's a full-size boiler, if you call a boiler that makes tea full-size and it has a proper water gauge. And around the water gauge, there are four pieces of stainless steel, which are 3 16ths of an inch in diameter. And these rods protect the water gauge from any impact. I'm going to make a permutation on this idea. I'm going to use four pieces of stainless steel. I'm going to fit into two pieces of brass, one at the top and one at the bottom of the water gauge. This is definitely a prototype, so I'm doing it all freehand. And once again, the calibrated eye is quite useful, but there's no such thing as the calibrated eye. It's just a term to describe your eye sort of knowing where you want to drill the holes. And it doesn't always work. Sometimes I drill holes in the wrong place. And for all you beginners out there going, oh, I wish I could do that. Oh, it must be really good to do that. Well, it is, but you just need to practice. I have no more talent than the next man in the street. I just practice and try hard at things. Practice makes perfect. Well, almost. And I'm really not bothered with this because if it doesn't work out, then it's going to be thrown in the bin. But just in case it's successful, I'm taking the trouble to drill the holes in the right place in the corners of the piece of brass. Obviously, now I'm editing the video, I know exactly what the outcome's going to be. You will once you've seen the video. But at the time I was doing this job, I really wasn't sure whether it was going to work. Here, for instance, I'm positioning the fitting between the top nut and the top part of the water gauge, and it's no good. The black o-ring is the original o-ring in this water gauge, and it's too thin. The nut was pressing the piece of brass really hard against the top fitting, and I need a bit of flexibility. So, I cut an o-ring from a piece of silicone rubber tubing, using the extremely sharp scalpel that a kind viewer sent to me a while back, and once again thank you for that scalpel, it is incredibly sharp. I will try not to sever an artery. What I need to achieve with this system is a really good watertight fitting between the nut and the glass with the piece of silicone tubing in between the two. But this piece of brass that I'm moving about needs to be a little bit flexible. So I'm going to use another o-ring to hold this in place. And here it is. This o-ring sits on the top fitting. And then when I put the nut in place with the piece of silicone rubber tubing, it will hold the brass fitting in place that will in turn hold the bars in place and push it against the o-ring that are fitted on the outside of the threads of the top fitting of the water gauge. These two brass nuts, complete with the silicone o-ring inside the brass nuts, are what makes a water and steam tight seal between the glass and the fitting. But they don't need to be too tight. If you over tighten these nuts, then what's going to happen is the glass will probably fracture. You may be wondering what's going on here. I'm using a special tool to expand the o-ring to fit the glass. When I trained as an electronics engineer many, many years ago, we used to use these for fitting rubber sleeves onto pieces of electrical cable inside pieces of equipment. I don't really know what they're called. I'm showing you the radio spares number so you can check it in the catalogue, but we used to call them honeymoon pliers. Anyway, back to the job. That's enough of that sort of thing. The next part of the job is to make some of these. These are three thirty seconds of an inch diameter pieces of stainless steel, but I've turned the end down to a sixteenth. 
That's because when I drilled the holes around the edge of the two square pieces of brass, I didn't drill the holes all the way through, I just drilled them deep enough to take the ends of the pieces of stainless steel. So here's the general idea. The two red O-rings put positive pressure on the square brass parts, which in turn hold the four pieces of stainless steel rod firmly in position. But there's a bit of flexibility because don't forget, the copper boiler expands and contracts relative to its temperature. And that's why you'd never over tighten the nuts that hold the silicone rubber against the glass. Things need to move around a bit. Very shortly, I'm going to steam the boiler to make sure that the water gauge fitting works. But before I do that, I'm going to change the size of the blower jet. The original one is a little bit on the big side. And even the one that I've made has a 1 16th of an inch jet down the centre, which is still too big. But if you make the hole in the blower nozzle too small, it's likely to block up with soot and debris mixed with steam oil in the part of the boiler that it lives. And don't forget, it's not the volume of steam coming from the blower that draws the fire, it's the speed at which the steam goes up the chimney. It's time now to test the water gauge. So here's a shovel, and there's the water gauge. Now if I did this without this protector being in place, there would be several pieces of glass on the bench. In this design of water gauge protector, there is no contact whatsoever between the metal bars or the fittings and the glass. It's time now to give it another steam test. I can't run it on coal as of yet because I don't have any way of getting water into the boiler. Coal-fired boilers need to be fitted with two devices for pumping water into the boiler. That's why I'm running it on gas. I'm testing the blower and it's a lot quieter. On a vertical boiler the blower is not really necessary when running the boiler on gas. But I'm just testing it out. With this incredible small gas burner, in no time at all I'm at working pressure. 100 pounds per square inch, no leaks on the water gauge and everything's looking okay. I'm pleased to say that the water gauge hasn't exploded and I've turned the gas off so the pressure is dropping. I won't show you this in real time, that takes too long. But as you can see, every time the clock wipe appears, like this, the pressure drops even further. And after the final clock wipe, the pressure is at zero. So as far as gauge protectors go, this is a success. It protects the gauge. It doesn't protect the operator, but that's not a problem. Because if you don't fracture the glass, it's not going to explode, is it? And the beauty of this type of protector is you can actually see the water level. Some of the ones that are quite scaly that have either glass or perspex in them are good. They look great. But I find it really difficult to see the water level through the cloudiness of the perspex or the dirtiness of the glass. I've been wanting to make one of these gauge protectors for a long time, as well as having the design for the gauge protector in my head for a long time too. And the superb Castle Steam V6 boiler was an obvious candidate to try it out. And now for the alternative ending. This is the Great Western Railway 14XX steam locomotive that I recently modified. And quite a few viewers have written in and said to me, well, why is it making so much noise? Why does it make that horrible whirring noise? Why is it moving about? Well, the reason for that is it's on my soundboard. So I thought, just for you people, I would take it off the soundboard and put it on the bench. And as you can now hear, it's a lot quieter and I think it will probably make some people very happy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. <laughs>